Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Tianan and as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, today I'm bringing you guys another book unboxing video. I feel like I've only just filmed a book unboxing video. That one should be live on my channel by the time this one goes up. So if you haven't seen that, I will leave it linked up above and down below. I think I unboxed eight books in that video. And once again, I do have eight books here to unbox with you guys. Now, I believe that a lot of these books are going to be pre-orders. However, there might be some other books that I've bought that are just thrown in here as well. Essentially, I've been collecting these parcels for the last week. I knew that a lot of them were gonna be on their way. And so I did decide to hold off on opening them so that I could film this book unboxing video. I personally love watching book unboxing videos. I feel like that's the way I discover a lot of new books. So I hope you guys get something out of this one as well. And without further ado, let's dive into the unboxing. Now there isn't gonna be a real order to this. I have just kind of stacked them up as I've received them. So this is going to be a surprise for me as well. But this is the first book. I will say that I think all of these are actually from Waterstones. I tend to pre-order a lot of books when they do offer their double stamp steal, which if you don't know, for every £10 you spend in Waterstones, you get one stamp added to your plus card. With double stamps, of course, that means for every £10 you spend, you get two stamps. And then when you get 10 stamps, you get £10 off. So that is why I bought the majority of these. And to be honest, with all of these arriving, I think that I will definitely have racked up some points and some credit so who knows I may do another unboxing video soon but first off we have this book which I am very excited about and this one is upside down but it is Circe by Madeline Miller in this gorgeous collector's edition look at this you guys isn't it the most beautiful thing now I'm not gonna lie I wasn't too keen on the color choice for this because we do already have one out which is similar to this it's Madeline Miller's other book which is the Song of Achilles. I will just grab it off my shelves here actually because I do have it to hand. So this is the first book that was in this kind of edition and yeah I'm not sure if the red and the blue go together but they do look so so pretty. Look at these covers you guys. I am actually obsessed. But for those of you who don't know Circe is one of my all-time favorite books. I read it about four years ago now. Fell in love with the story completely and I haven't stopped thinking about it since to be honest with you. It is definitely do a reread and I might even read from this beautiful edition because yeah it is just so so pretty. I think that we have a letter from the author in there as well yep so I will be reading that to just get some extra content but we also have gorgeous end pages here this is what the back looks like and I'm just extremely excited to own this one now because it's always nice to have a brand new edition of your favorite book isn't it especially when it's as gorgeous as this one but you may be able to see it from the shelves behind me my Greek myth retelling shelf is pretty full so I don't know what I'm gonna do with them I'm gonna have to have a rearrange of my bookshelves I think to try and fit this one on now as I've just mentioned I did read this book about four years ago so my description of it may not be the best but in this one if you couldn't have guessed we follow Circe and at the start of the book she is living with the other gods in Olympus however one day she is actually cast out of Olympus after she loses control of her magic I believe and scorns her family and another god she is banished to the the island of Ayaya where she does live in isolation however she does meet a few travelers along the way she does cross paths with a lot of well-known figures from the Greek myths such as the Minotaur, Daedalus, Icarus, Medea and of course Odysseus and we follow Circe through the years as she has to kind of battle with herself because of course she is a goddess however she has lived amongst the humans for so long now that she does have to kind of make a decision and see whether she does belong with the gods or whether she has found her place amongst the humans. I don't want to say too much more. I feel like you really do just need to dive into this one without really knowing too much. That's how I tackled it. I listened to the audiobook for this one as well, which I would highly recommend because it is genuinely one of the most beautiful audiobooks I've ever listened to. So if you couldn't tell, I am very excited about this book. I'm so happy to have this new edition and I would definitely encourage you guys to pick it up and give it a go if you do have some inclination to read it. Right, on to the second parcel. That one was definitely harder to open, but this is one that I'm so excited for. It is upside down, but here's a little sneak peek. And I will just 
take it out like this and you guys can see what it is. This one is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross and this has been getting so much love recently you guys that I have finally given into the hype and have ordered myself a copy. Now I am gutted that I missed out on the Fairy Loot special edition of this one. I believe it came in the YA box which is why I didn't get my hands on it. I am not currently subscribed to their YA subscription box and it's moments like these where I wish I was but saying that though the standard edition is beautiful. I absolutely love the artwork and essentially I did buy it because of all of the hype that this has been receiving. Saying that though I do have one of Rebecca Ross's other books which is A River Enchanted and I got that in an Illumicrate box I believe and I still haven't gotten to it so I may do a reading vlog where I read books written by Rebecca Ross. Just because I've heard that her books are so beautifully written you get sucked into the world, you fall for the characters and the setting as well is just one of the main things that draws people to these books. So I am genuinely sold. From what I can gather, and you'll have to bear with me on this one because I haven't actually read the book, our main character in this and her brother are extremely close and then her brother actually goes off to fight in a war. Now they start corresponding and sending letters to each other however what our main character doesn't know is that it's not actually her brother that is sending her these letters, it's her rival. Now I'm guessing that these letters are going to be very personal and that they are both going to get closer because of that. And it just says here, an epic enemies to lovers fantasy novel filled with hope and heartbreak and the unparalleled power of love. That honestly has me sold. I believe that there's some magic in this as well but I may be wrong. As I said I haven't read it but I'm desperate to get to it. I feel like this is one I might read in November especially as the sequel is coming out in December I believe as well. So I am extremely excited to own this one now. It's actually taken a while to get to me. I think I ordered it about three weeks ago so very happy that it's arrived. It is not damaged in any way and I can get to it before the end of the year but this is such a beautiful book. So glad to own it and I've heard nothing but good things so hopefully I do have a good time with this one. On to the third parcel. That wasn't actually too bad. This is another pre-order and I think, yeah, it's upside down again, but this one is Fall of Ruin and Wrath by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I am very embarrassed to say that I have never actually read a book by Jennifer L. Armentrout before. When I started watching booktube, everyone was talking about the Lux series by this author, but unfortunately it just really wasn't for me. It was a sci-fi alien type of story, which I did almost by myself, but I just knew that it wasn't going to be for me, so I did hold off. Jennifer L. Armentrout, though, has now moved into the fantasy genre. She is the author of the Blood and Ash series which I believe is more of a fantasy romance and is definitely a series that I'm interested in. However, this one for some reason just drew me in. I think it was definitely the cover. I love a sword on the cover and we also had some ravens there as well. Also, I'm a sucker for blue so this is just perfect for me. But I believe it's an adult fantasy book and I am just going to redo the synopsis because I genuinely can't remember what this book is about. I read the synopsis as I was placing an order for books that weren't out yet and at the time it called to me and so now that it's here let's find out what it's about together. It says she survives on her intuition, he thrives on her pleasure. Long ago the world was destroyed by gods, only nine cities were spared, separated by a vast wilderness teeming with monsters and unimaginable dangers. Each city is now ruled by a guardian, royals who feed on mortal pleasure. Born with an intuition that never fails, Callista knows her talents are valuable to the powerful of her world, so she lives hidden as the Baron of Archwood's courtesan. In exchange for protection, she gives him information. However, when her intuition saves a prince in dire trouble, the voice inside her blazes with warning and promise. Today he'll bring her joy, but one day he'll be her doom. When the Baron takes an interest in the prince and the prince takes an interest in Callista, she becomes his temporary companion. However, her city simmers with rebellion. With knights and monsters at the city gates and a hungry prince in her bed, even her powerful instincts may not be enough to keep her safe. Callista must choose. Follow her intuition to safety or her heart to downfall. Doesn't that just sound amazing, you guys? I have slowly been delving into fantasy romance as a genre lately, and let me tell you, I've been having such an amazing time. So I am very excited to be getting to this one. I'm not sure how long of a series it's going to be, but knowing Jennifer L. Almond I feel like it's going to be at least a trilogy, maybe even longer. It has had a lot of praise as well. We have some quotes on the back about it, which 
I'm not gonna go into, but essentially they are all saying how amazing it is. Oh wow, we have a beautiful map in there. You guys know how much I love maps in my fantasy books. And yeah, all in all, I'm just so, so excited for this. I'm really glad that past me decided to pre-order it and I am very excited to be getting to my first Jennifer L. Armitrop book. Right, next up. Wow, these parcels are hard to open. We have a, another pre-order. It's another fantasy book, which is again upside down. But this one is Talon Sister by Jen Williams. Now, Jen Williams is apparently a British fantasy award-winning author. However, I have never heard of her, I don't think, and I've never read a book by her. But this is book one of the Talon duology, which definitely piques my interest, especially as it's a duology. I'm not committing myself to buying loads of books in a new series. But the the synopsis of this one sounds so so complicated i'm not sure if i want to read you it because it is genuinely so long we have a lot of different characters in here and so the synopsis kind of goes into what each of them are doing at the start of this book but this is an adult political fantasy book with a lot of killing magic and magical creatures involved such as griffins again this has so much praise on the back it is actually insane so many people are saying how fantastic it is one of the says Talon Sister sweeps readers into a fantasy world both delightfully familiar and brilliantly unexpected, brimming with griffins and broken warriors and forests filled with uncanny beasts. That is a quote by H.M. Long and again it just has me so excited to get to this book. I haven't actually heard anyone talk about this one aside from Elliot Brooks and I watched her video about upcoming releases and immediately pre-ordered this one. Just because it sounded so intriguing to me, Kiwi has now made an appearance once again so I do apologise but this was definitely a spur of the moment pre-order. I am glad that I have it now though. It is a very small book which is going to be a problem for me when I try and put them on my shelves. Oh my goodness she has collected the tabs off of the books. But yeah, sorry that I'm not giving you a full in-depth synopsis of this one. It even has more praise on the front page. We have two maps on there as well, which will hopefully get me more familiar with the world. And yeah, I'm very happy to have pre-ordered this one as well. I feel like I am just gonna dive into this one without real expectations. I do enjoy doing that in fantasy books just because if I have some sort of preset notion of what the book is gonna be or how I'm going to feel, and it does sometimes impact my enjoyment. So it's definitely going to be fun diving into a new series, meeting new characters, and finding out what is actually going on in here as well. Right, so this is the halfway point. So we have four more boxes to open. And this is the first one that I've failed to open. Oh no, I've lost the tab as well. Let me try this way. There we go, that was a bit better. But you can't actually get a sneak peek of this one. So let me take it out. Wow, that was a struggle. But this one is Herc by Phoenicia Rogerson. This, if you couldn't tell, is a Hercules inspired book, which I am so excited for. This just said, this should be the story of Hercules, his 12 labors, his endless adventures, everyone's favorite hero, right? Well, it's not. This is the story of everyone else. Alcmene, Herc's mother, she has knives everywhere. Hylas, Herc's first friend, they were more than friends. Megara, Herc's wife, she'll tell you about their marriage. Eurystheus, oversaw Herc's labors, he never asked for the job. His friends, his enemies, his wives, his children, his lovers, his rivals, his gods, his victims. It's time to hear their stories. Told with humor and heart, Herc gives voice to the silenced characters in this feminist, queer, and sometimes shocking retelling of the classic Hercules myth. That synopsis has actually shocked me a bit because I did not think that that was what this book is about, but honestly, I am so pleasantly surprised. I do love Hercules as a character. He is one of the most popular figures from Greek mythology, and I do love the Disney film, but it is definitely gonna be interesting to see his life and the people that are involved in his life and what they actually got up to and what they thought of him. This is another beautiful book though, one that I'm extremely excited excited to be adding to my Greek myth collection. However, once again, it means that I need to sort out my shelves because they're definitely not all gonna fit on there. But isn't that such a first world reader problem, guys? I am so excited to own this one now. It's one that I've pre-ordered for a while, actually. And I'm very glad that it has arrived and that I can hopefully get to it very soon. Next up, we have a thinner parcel, which again, I'm actually struggling to open. I'm doing so well, you guys, but this isn't going good now. Right, this isn't one where you can have a sneak peek, 
but this is another beautiful book. It is Autumn Chills by Agatha Christie, which is a collection of short stories inspired by all things autumnal. If you're new to my channel, you may not know that I absolutely love Agatha Christie's works. I have all of the Miss Marple books and all of the Poirot books, as well as a few standalone murder mysteries here and there, and the Tommy and Tuppence books actually as well. I have read all of the Miss Marple books. I'm slowly making my way through the Poirot books, and I have now started collecting these beautiful cloth bound editions. This is the latest one, this was also another pre-order and isn't it just the most beautiful thing guys? Can you just appreciate the cover for a sec because I am in love? And then the end pages as well are just so autumnal, I absolutely love it. Now I will just see if I can tell you which short stories are here. We have Murder in the Muse, The Case of the Rich Woman, While the Light Lasts, Triangle at Roads, Death by Drowning, The Bird with the Broken Wing, The La Majuria in Harry the House of Lurking Death, Tape Measure Murder, The Voice in the Dark, Four and Twenty Blackbirds, and The Witness for the Prosecution. So they are all of the short stories featured in this book. There are a few of these out now. I believe that there is one for every season, but this is the first of those four that I have actually bought for myself. The other ones are more of the popular stories, I want to say, such as Murder on the Orient Express, and then there were none, 450 from Paddington, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, etc. So I am very excited now to be getting some different collections that I can pick up in the different seasons and give them a read through. So hopefully I can prioritise this one either in October or November but I'm so happy to own this one, it's so pretty and for those of you who don't know, Agatha Christie is a murder mystery author. All of her murders are complex murder mysteries that I have just fallen in love with. They are very short as well and as I mentioned in this collection we do have some short stories in particular. Now whilst those aren't normally something that I'd gravitate towards. Agatha Christie's short stories are just phenomenal. The fact that she can create such a complex murder mystery in such a short amount of pages is what blows me away every time. I never feel like they're lacking. I always feel satisfied having read them and so that is why I've decided to go ahead and buy myself this book. We've reached the penultimate package you guys and can you guys tell what it is just from these frayed edges alone? I feel like most of you guys will be able to if you're from the UK but this one is wedged in there extremely tightly. But this one is The Last Devil to Die by Richard Osman, which is the next book in the Thursday Murder Club series. Now, I'm very embarrassed to say that this is a series that I haven't yet started, and this is book four. The premise of this series is something that I'm just drawn to, and I think that I'm actually scared of the hype for the series. I'm so scared that I'm not going to enjoy it as much as everyone else, and so I think that is why I've been putting it off for so long. I feel like every time I've hauled one of these books I'm like I'm definitely gonna read them this year. I'm gonna prioritize them. I'm hoping to get to them in November and then I never do. So I can't guarantee you a time when I will read these books but I am very excited to be adding the next one to my collection. I do have all of them in hardcover which is why I did decide to go ahead and pre-order this one and this is the Waterstones exclusive edition with the gorgeous stenciled edges which you guys know I couldn't refuse. So yes this is the newest one. In this series I believe that we're following four older main characters. They meet up with each other once every week in order to discuss some old true crime cases and then one day a murder actually happens on their doorstep and so they band together to try and figure out what happened and solve the case. Now I have mentioned previously that I really do love my Agatha Christie books, especially Miss Marple as she is also an older woman who manages to solve all of these different murders. I feel like older characters are always so fun to follow because people underestimate them, they tend to overlook them, but they are some of the most important people in an investigation, especially in a small town such as this one and St. Mary Mead. So I do feel like I am gonna like these books, I'm just so scared to actually dive into this series. So if you read these books and want me to as well, please do let me know in the comments because maybe seeing you guys hype these will kind of push me to read them. But either way, this is the next book, I'm very happy to add it to my collection and when I do get to it, I will have this beautiful beautiful edition as well. Now we've finally made it to the last book and this one is pretty heavy guys so I don't know what it could be. Let's see if I can open it first. Yes I can and oh my gosh I actually forgot about this one but we have saved the best to last I think. Oh 
my goodness guys i am genuinely gobsmacked right now this is the newest edition of the hobbit and i'm just gonna take it out of the plastic because i can't quite show you with the glare but this is beautiful so i'll be right back right i've taken the packaging off guys and i can't stop staring at this this is honestly one of the most beautiful books so this is the front cover for you guys this is what the spine looks like and then the star of the show if i turn you around are these stenciled edges look at these you guys we have the dwarven runes on there which i am absolutely obsessed with now on the ones for the lord of the rings we had elvish text so i really do like that they've gone a different route with this one but what i actually love is that in this unboxing i have shown you two new editions of two of my favorite books which is the hobbit and of course cersei you guys know how much i love the hobbit i don't think i need to go into how much of an impact this book has had on my life but it is one of the things that's got me through some of the worst times ever this story in particular and of course the lord of the rings films I can never thank Tolkien and Peter Jackson enough for bringing this world to life because it has gotten me through so many dark moments in my life and also so many happy moments as well. This book is such a comfort book for me. I turn to it every time I am feeling a little down or every time I just want a fun fantasy adventure to dive into because it has everything that you could ever want. Of course I am so familiar with these characters now, the world, the setting, everything like that and I think it is that familiarity that is just such a comfort okay we have some extra little bits in here which i will look at in a second but this is actually the new illustrated version and i believe that it includes illustrations by tolkien himself yes it says illustrated by the author on there which i feel like is just going to be even more magical let me just try and go through some of this to show you guys so we have some kind of basic illustrations there of the lonely mountain in and bag end wow okay we have the elven king's gates there wow we have the forest river so for those of you who have read this book or have seen the film that is when they go into the barrels and make their way down to lake town we then have a sketch of lake town which again is just beautiful and i cannot wait to read this edition so we have the front door of the dwarven stronghold as well and yeah, I I could honestly show you guys all of the illustrations in this because they are so, so beautiful. Oh my gosh, look at this one from Bag End. How amazing is that, you guys? I genuinely cannot wait to read this one. As well as that, actually, I will just show you the naked hardcover of the book because, again, it does have a really nice foil design on there, which is just so, so pretty. And then I've had a lot of things fall out of this book, actually. So let's see what we've got. I have three different pieces of paper so i'm gonna just start off with this one this is a map of the wilderland which looks like this then we have this one with runes on it which is probably the lonely mountain yeah oh my gosh guys i love it so so much look how pretty this is and then lastly we have this one which is another one of the wilderland showing mirkwood so i'm not sure if i meant to have two but i do have two are they exactly the same Yes, that might be a mistake, but I'm very happy to have that because now that means I can display one and keep one nice and pristine. And I feel like you guys will probably know what The Hobbit is about, but I'm just going to read you the synopsis of this one because it does go into your information about this specific edition. So it says, Bilbo Baggins is a hobbit who enjoys a comfortable and ambitious life, rarely travelling further than the pantry of his hobbit hole in Bag End. But his contentment is disturbed when the wizard, Gandalf, and a company of 13 dwarves arrive on his doorstep one day to whisk him away on an unexpected journey there and back again. They have a plot to raid the treasure hoard of Smaug the Magnificent, a large and very dangerous dragon. Written for J.R.R. Tolkien's own children, The Hobbit was published on the 21st of September 1937. With a beautiful cover design, a handful of black and white drawings, and two maps by the author himself, the book became an instant success and was reprinted shortly afterwards with five colour plates. Tolkien's own selection of finished paintings and drawings have become inseparable from his text, adorning editions of The Hobbit for more than 85 years. But the published
finished art has afforded only a glimpse of Tolkien's creative process, and many additional sketches, colour drawings and maps, although exhibited and published elsewhere, have never appeared within the pages of The Hobbit. In this unique enhanced edition of Tolkien's enchanting tale, the full panoply of his art is reproduced for the first time, presenting a grand total of 50 illustrations to accompany Bilbo Baggins on his adventure there and back again. Oh my gosh! I'm so excited for this. It is actually due a reread, so I will be listening to the audiobook as I normally do, but I will be reading along physically just so that I can see all of the illustrations. I feel like that is one of the most beautiful things about these books, is that we have so many things to go alongside the story, such as the maps and the illustrations, that really do help bring this world to life. I am going to stop talking about this one now though, because I feel like I could go on for a while. I probably have, so I'm sorry about that. That, but I'm just so excited about this edition. It is genuinely one of the most beautiful books ever and I'm so so happy that Pass Me decided to pre-order it because again this is one that I've had pre-ordered for months and so to finally have it, to see it in person is just beautiful and yeah. I'm so so happy that I decided to buy it. And there we have it you guys, these are all of the books from today's unboxing. I am genuinely excited for each and every single one of these books. I am so happy that I decided to pre-order them except for Divine Rivals of course, that was the only non-pre-order book in here. But yeah, I've had an amazing selection of books, I've also had a lot of stamps put onto my Waterstones card as well. So all in all, it's a fantastic day you guys and yeah, I'm just obsessed with all of these books and I cannot wait to read them and share my thoughts on them with you guys. If you have made it this far through into the video and would like to let me know that you're still here, please go ahead and leave me a mountain emoji down below. How could I not choose that when one of the main settings in The Hobbit is the Misty Mountains? I feel like it is such a perfect emoji to encapsulate this video because of how excited I got receiving this book. So if you don't have anything in particular that you would like to say but you would like to let me know that you're still here, please go ahead and do that now. As well as that, please don't forget to click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me. But that is it for me today guys, thank you once again for watching, it truly does mean the world to me and I will see you soon in my next video. Goodbye!